This is a brief summary of how I was able to build a MIDI trigger recording light using the Reaper Digital Audio Workstation software. Why did I build it? Primarily to alert others not to disturb me when I was in my recording space. But really as a courtesy, it lets others know when it's safe to knock, when it's safe to get my attention. My poor wife trying to bring me lunch. She can't do it if she doesn't know it's safe to interrupt what I'm working on. There are things on the market already. Punchlight makes a recording lamp. It's a USB device and has some software to be able to configure it for a variety of states, be it playback or a punch-in session or an actual recording session. This can all be configured in the software. The drawback is being a USB device, there's a certain distance limitation. They also make a MIDI device, very similar to what I ended up making, but the price point of $189 didn't really fit my bill. There are scripts available on the forums shown in the link here of how to configure Reaper to control Philips Hue intelligent light bulbs to change colors or state, depending on which mode Reaper is in. Another option is to just simply use a light switch to turn your record light on and off. If you want to get really fancy, you could even find one that's wireless. I needed something that was customizable, something relatively inexpensive. And really, I just did it to see if I could. I needed something that was going to activate and deactivate automatically when I was in and out of the record mode inside Reaper. I needed something that was really simple to configure and build. I needed something that was reliable and flexible should I ever want to change what I'm switching on and off. Lastly, it had to be cost effective. At the heart of the system is the Arduino Uno. What is an Uno? According to SparkFun's website, Arduino is an open source platform used for building electronic projects. The Arduino consists of both a physical programmable circuit board and a piece of software or integrated development environment that runs on your computer, which is used to write and upload computer code to the physical board. To connect your computer's MIDI interface to the Arduino, it's recommended that you use an opto isolator. Now, what is an opto isolator, you ask? According to Wikipedia, an opto isolator is an electronic component that transfers electrical signals between two isolated circuits using light. Well, what the heck does that mean? Basically, inside a chip is an LED and a photo detector. When the LED activates, the photo detector activates. One state mirrors the other. It comes in an 8-pin dip package. Inside, you can see a cross-section of the LED and photo detector circuit side by side. Do you really need an opto-isolator circuit? It does electronically isolate your digital audio workstation from your Arduino. It's also in the MIDI specification. Any commercially produced MIDI product that has a MIDI input is going to be electronically isolated using an opto-isolator. Audio devices often form ground loops when the ground potential is at different states. This can often be heard as a buzzing sound and is sometimes very difficult to remedy. Best practice is to try to eliminate ground loops wherever possible. An opto-isolator prevents ground loops from forming between MIDI devices. Here's a picture of my homemade opto-isolator. Although if I had it to do over again, I probably would have used something commercially available. This device costs about half as much as it cost me to put together and is a lot smaller. Lastly, you'll need a relay module. The relay module takes the signal from the Arduino and allows you to switch a much higher voltage and higher current device. Relay modules are available as a high trigger or low trigger option. This determines what logic state activates the relay. A high trigger state activates the relay when the logic state goes high. Conversely, the low trigger activates the relay when the logic state goes low. Either will work just fine. But if you use a low trigger module like I did, there's a couple of simple code changes that are required and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Let's go over a list of the parts. First, you're gonna need the Arduino Uno itself. You're gonna need an opto isolator circuit and you're gonna need the relay module. You may also need some additional parts such as the MIDI five pin DIN connector, some project wire, solder, and perhaps a project enclosure. Let's break down some of the costs. The Uno itself was $10.86. List price on an authentic Arduino Uno 
is about $25. I found a Chinese knockoff that works perfectly fine for my needs. The opto isolator you can buy for about $5. Or if you're mean to build it yourself, you can spend $15. Lastly, the relay module is just shy of $7. You can buy them in a variety of configurations, from a single relay to two relay, four relay, or even eight relay. Because we're only leveraging one output from the Arduino, it only makes sense to use a single relay module. I found one that was only a dollar more for a two relay module, so that's what I bought. Maybe someday I'll take advantage of the second relay. Other miscellaneous parts might run you five to ten dollars. The grand total? less than 30 bucks. If you don't already have a MIDI interface on your computer, there's an inexpensive USB version I found on Amazon for about $15. And here's the schematic diagram we're working with. It has the MIDI connector on the left, the opto isolator chip next to that, the Arduino, and then lastly on the right hand side is the MIDI module. And this is what mine turned out to look like. So let's now focus on the Arduino sketch. What is a sketch? A sketch is the name that the Arduino uses for a program. It's the unit of code that's uploaded to and run on the Arduino board. Mr. Chris Felton has a great YouTube video which explains how the sketch works from start to finish. This is what the sketch looks like from top to bottom. Now, one thing that's different is Chris is using Logic Pro and we're using Reaper. Logic Pro doesn't send out the same MIDI signals that Reaper does for the record state change. I had no idea how Reaper was sending signals at the MIDI port when the record mode was enabled, but then I came across this YouTube video posted by Ruud van Stennis out of the Netherlands. He had successfully built a device which latched a relay every time the record mode had started. So I wrote to Mr. Van Stennis and asked him how he did it. He was nice enough to share with me exactly how Reaper sent the MIDI signals for the record on and off functions. Once I had this information, it was a simple matter of changing the Arduino sketch to trigger the relay based on these revised MIDI signals. There were four modifications required. The note on command was actually changed to a control change. Channel two changed to channel one. MIDI note number 24 was changed to controller number 44. The note velocity changed from 127 to 69 and the second note velocity was changed to controller value number five. Let's now review the process of downloading and modifying the Arduino sketch. From the Instructables website, we'll navigate down to step six. And in step six, we'll see a PDF file containing the sketch for the Arduino. Opening the PDF file, we'll go ahead and select all and copy the entire contents of the PDF file to our clipboard and navigate to the Arduino software. We'll paste the entire contents of the PDF file into the Arduino software and begin making a few simple edits. Starting at the top, we're gonna change the MIDI note on value from 144 to 176. No need to worry about the MIDI note off value. We don't use it in this program. The filter channel value will have to change from one to zero. The filter note value will change from 24 to 44. Lastly, toward the bottom of the program, we're going to change the MIDI velocity for the on trigger from 127 to 69 and the MIDI velocity for the off trigger from zero to five. We'll then hit the verify checkbox icon It'll prompt us to save the program. We'll click save. And it will begin compiling the sketch. Once complete, we'll hit the upload icon. And it will upload to the Arduino. Once the upload is complete, the Arduino will reset and the program will begin to run. If you have a relay module that activates when the signal input pin is in a low state rather than a high state, like mine, you'll need to make a couple of additional changes. The first thing we'll do is the digital write pin relay value is set to low. We're gonna change it from low to high. 
When the program first begins, that pin will be in a high state, which will actually deactivate our relay module. Further down in the program, we're going to need to change the pin relay for the record start and change this from high to low. That way, when the recording begins, the state of the output of the Arduino will change from a high state to a low state, thereby activating the relay. And now when the recording stops, we need that state to go back to high. So we change pin relay low back to high. We'll then compile our software again and upload it to the Arduino. Once the upload is complete, the Arduino resets and the program begins to run. The last thing we need to do is make the following change in Reaper. Go to the Options menu and scroll down to Preferences. Under the Control slash OSC slash Web selection, click Add. Under the Control Surface mode, select HUI Partial. The MIDI output will be your MIDI output device. Click OK. And click OK again. When the relay module activates, power stops flowing to the normally closed side and switches to the normally open side, thereby illuminating your sign. When the relay module de-energizes, power to the normally open contact is stopped. Notice how power to the common terminal switches from the normally closed position to the normally open position. At this point, when you click the record button, your record light should illuminate. When you stop, the record light will go out.